Welcome to Gallagher's Grub. So I shot this video with my wife about eight months ago and I just now got around to editing it. I think it's a good video and I know it's a great recipe so stick around. So today we're gonna be cooking right here in our kitchen in Manhattan and we're gonna be making some oxtail. Now my wife here is from the Caribbean. She's from where? Antigua and Barbuda. This is actually based on her mother's recipe. So stick around for some Caribbean oxtail. You're gonna love this one. Okay, so when you buy oxtail from the store, it comes like this. And, um, you know, all you really need to do before you start cooking the meat is you have to wash it. So first things first is you get the meat in a bowl and then you're gonna add some cold water, some lime and some lemon and wash the meat. So you really just kinda get in there um wash the meat and after you get it all nice and washed um then you're gonna dry it and season it and let it sit for a bit rinse out that bowl because we're actually going to put them back in that bowl now that we're in here we're going to season the meat this is probably the seasoning that I use the most, Landry's garlic salt. I just, I like the flavor. I think it gives a good mix, not just of salt, but of like actual flavor. We also use some of this Goya adobo. This is all purpose seasoning. It can be used for lots of different things, not just meat. You splash of that as well. Really get in there. Don't be afraid to get in there. Um, really kind of massage the seasoning in. All right. So fresh black pepper. And then just get in there and like toss it around some more so that everything's spread out evenly over each piece of meat. And I am playing sous chef today. I'm gonna to chop up four cloves of garlic and julienne, half of an onion, half of an orange bell pepper, half of a yellow bell pepper, half of a red bell pepper, and then a few green onions. Mostly just get the white parts. Now we're going to add some oil to a pot and over medium heat, we're going to brown the meat on all sides. So oxtail really, as the name implies, is the tail of an ox, or these days it's really the tail of any cattle. And it's a really tough cut of meat, so you need to slow cook it. You need to cook it for a long time in order to get it tender. Then after about 10 minutes or so, when it's nice and brown on all sides, we're gonna remove the meat from the pot. Then we're gonna add the vegetables into the pot and cook them in the meat drippings. Softened up a bit. We put our meat back in. Okay. All right, and this is where we start to add some of the other things that we need to add. So a little sauce. I'm not gonna try and pronounce it. <laughs> We're gonna add a touch more of the adobo, little cayenne pepper, little thyme, a little bit more 
garlic salt. You might not be able to find this, but you get the idea. Some tomato puree. Um, it's just quite convenient because it comes in a little, almost like a toothpaste tube. You can really start to smell the flavors coming together in this. Add our water. I like to use hot water, so I boiled the kettle and just gonna pour some on. Now I'm adding this much water because I want to try and submerge the meat. And we're gonna just let this cook covered for an extended period and we're gonna keep checking on it. So after it's been simmering for a little bit, not too long, just wanna come back, give it a little stir. And one important ingredient that we use is whole cloves. But we don't wanna to use too many. I'm just gonna throw a few in my hand and throw them in the dish. These are gonna add a nice flavor as well. Just like, let me stir that in. And let it do its thing. So it's been cooking for about an hour. Just gonna come in, give it a stir. You want to stir it too much because you don't want the meat to start to disintegrate. So at this point, the meat is technically cooked. We want it to tenderize um, a little bit more. So you're going to keep cooking it, but we want to make sure that the sauce, it has the right flavor. So you're just going to do a quick little taste. Going back and adding some of the garlic salt the thyme again, add a little bit more of the adobo again, thyme pepper again. We're going to add something else that wasn't added before, use sparingly, but it's called seasoned salt. I'm just going to use a little bit of that as well, because we don't want the dish to be too salty. Stir that in. Right now the sauce is more orange, obviously, because we added the tomato paste or the tomato puree. So we're gonna add something called browning. So this is one type of it. Um, honestly, I would prefer to use the gray browning, but you know, it was not available. Now this stuff you use it's very sparingly and you'll see why in a second. So you just add a tiny bit and you see the color will already start to change. It's gonna darken it up a bit, thicken it up. You don't wanna use too much. Um, I'm gonna add a touch more. And the reason why I'm not kind of going all um, adding up you know, like half a bottle or something is because we have to add something else later that's gonna darken this up as well. So just a little. You start to get that richer color to what's gonna become our gravy. Right? So you just cover that and let it continue doing its thing. It might be helpful at this point in the cook, it's been cooking for about two hours, to um, skim off some of the oil because remember, this is gonna be the, the gravy or the sauce that goes with the oxtail, so you don't want it to be too oily. Um, so it's helpful at this point to, to do that before we really start reducing it a little bit more um, and adding the last couple ingredients. All right, so we are about two hours, 15 minutes in. 
We've skimmed that fat. This is the last step is to add some kidney beans. Now, it's important to note, these are no salt added. So we're just gonna we open up the can, strain off most, but not all of the liquid. Um, and just get that in there. Just slowly mix that in. You can see the meat's like a good color. Get that in and then cover it up and just let it sit for a few more minutes. All right, so it's been about seven to 10 minutes since we put the beans in, but I think we are ready to be plated. All right, let's do it. All right, so now we're ready to plate up. Using a slotted spoon to get some of the meat and some of the beans in there. Um, get that on the plate and then we'll use another spoon to just take out as much of the gravy as we want. You don't want to drown everything, which is why we're using the slotted spoon first to get just enough, get that nice and plated. And get some of that gravy on there as well. I like to finish things off, so the green onions, you obviously don't have to do this. Bon appétit! And here is our final dish, slow cooked Caribbean oxtail with some rice and broccoli. This is piping hot and ready to get in my belly. So this is how we make a Caribbean style oxtail. We're gonna give this a taste. Yeah, sure. Breaks apart with just a fork. No knife is necessary with this. Mm -hmm. That's great. <laughs> a little bit of rice with that. That sauce. Terrific, you can really taste the clove, which I like. Very tasty. Get some more of that meat. <laughs> you can see how it just kind of tears apart. You just give it a little spin. Don't be afraid to use your fingers. Mm, that is tasty. <laughs> so there you have it. Oxtail, Caribbean style. I mean, this is just so good. Give this recipe a try. Um, let us know what you think in the comments down below. Leave a like if you like this video. And subscribe to the channel. Definitely hit that subscribe button down there in the corner. And uh, yeah, if you want to see more videos like this, more Caribbean style videos. Let can, us know. <laughs> yeah, we can definitely make some more. Uh, and uh, of course, you know, keep on cooking. <laughs>